Are we live now? Yes, we are. Okay, hi guys, and welcome back to Vior Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. Now today, very, very exciting video, as we're going to be testing the HP G8 Fury ZenBook laptop, which is the most expensive laptop I've ever had to review or even try for VR since the inception of all time put together, to be honest with you, and on the VR Essentials YouTube channel. So thank you, HP, for sending this to us. And we're gonna be using the app after the fall as it is graphically very incentive and a very good app to be testing with this AMD Radeon W6600 M Pro graphics card, which is my very first time using AMD. Now the question is, how does the G8 Fury ZenBook laptop fare against perhaps the G7 or other laptops? Also, how does the AMD Radeon Pro graphics card fare against the NVIDIA RTX graphics card, which I'm more used to? We're gonna be using the HP Reverb G2 version two, by the way, and also I did test it with the HP Reverb G2 Omnicept edition. Now, as I mentioned, this is the version two of the G2 and wait until the end of the video as I will be providing you before that throughout the video, a lot of different testing and graphic settings and different resolutions that we use. So do go to the timestamp below to skip to wherever you feel is more relevant to you. And at the end of the video, I will talk to you a little bit more about, for example, the cable between the new cable, which is supposed to be better for AMD users and also the old cable, whether there's any differences there in gameplay or stutter or you know any kind of differences whatsoever so guys i'll see you in after the fall right away all right so first up we're inside of after the fall using the hp g8 fury zenbook with the amd graphics card and we're going to just show you very quickly as to the limitations of the actual laptop now first of all when you are inside of vr it's very important that you turn on motion smoothing um, because if you don't turn on motion smoothing inside of the HP Mixed Reality options, which you can get by going into the Steam VR user interface, then you will have a lot of jitter like so. So let me just show you very quickly to see if you can actually get this on your screen. So you just go to graphics and then you I'm just going to disable motion vector, sorry. There we go. And when I move, I don't know if you can see, but basically it's very choppy. It's not smooth when I move. So there's a lot of jitter around when I'm moving around. And I'm not moving my headset, I'm just moving my avatar from left to right. You'll see that it's absolutely not smooth whatsoever. So now when I turn on motion vector, it is much more smoother. I don't have all these jittery things happening when I move my avatar from left to right, or if I move it up and down or, you know, within the scene, basically. Now, the other thing is um, in terms of the limitations of the, the graphics. Now I've done a lot of testing. I will show you my AMD graphics later because I've gone online, I've looked at a lot of different things and honestly with After the Fall is extremely gra graphically intensive and there are several different things going on. So first of all, there's the settings inside of the actual lounge where everyone is, which I'm going to show you very briefly. So let me just bring up the menu here and then let's just go to settings. Now my settings inside of here, if I go to video, first of all, I cannot have 1.0 in render scale and let me show you why very very quickly even though it looks very smooth in some places when i move around you'll see that here the moment that i move my headset from right to left to right or right to left i get a lot a lot of jitter even though my render super sampling settings inside of the headset are within the actual resolution of the headset itself at the moment if i just go and check very quickly i believe that i set my video settings to 2252 by 200 2200 which is 194 percent which is still under the 4k per eye resolution 
uh, of the actual headset itself but I do get a lot of jitter when I'm here however when I move up further up and I move my headset here I don't have any jitter it's very strange The jitter only happens now and then at certain places of the game and there's two different settings that I change mainly. First of all the settings inside of the lounge and then the settings inside of the game. So first of all let's just change them here. For the render scale I normally put this to 80. 80 I don't get so much jitter. 90 I don't I get much more jitter so I, t I turn the render scale. I try not to, I mean at 70 I have no jitter whatsoever but it doesn't look clear at 70 so I put it to 80 then for anti aliasing I leave it at 2 and for the texture resolution I will bring this all the way down to 8th to eighth res because normally it should be better well half res I don't get so much jitter it seems but 8th res it's supposed to be better for me. Now, I kill off the soft shadows and I turn down the light shadow resolution to 256 and additional light shadows resolution to 256. Shadow cascades I put to 1 and then the shadow distance I put to around 20 or 10. Alright, so now it is better for me even though I do still have some jitter inside of here it is much better and the resolution of the gameplay isn't too much affected even though it looks a bit downgraded it's still okay for me it's still very clear the resolutions are still okay and everything is still nice so I'm all good with this here alright so now let's go inside of the game and I'm going to show you that I changed the resolution when I go inside of the game because I can actually bump them up later on so let me go to harvest run Alright, so now we're inside of the actual lounge before we we're going to play now. You can see all the textures, everything, and if I move my headset from left to right, I don't have any issues whatsoever. So, during the game, normally speaking, I also don't have issues unless there's a huge amount of hordes of zombies coming around in the same space and there's a lot of textures around, then I will have some issues. However, I can bump the graphics up, so let me just bring this up. We're going to put this to half. There we go. And then we're going to bump up the render scale to 90 this time and the anti-aliasing to 4. And then for the zombie ragdoll amount, I can actually put this to high. And then for these, I can bump them up to 512, even though it doesn't make a super, super huge difference, to be honest with you. So 512 is absolutely fine. And then everything else I'll leave as is. I will leave the shadows on, however, the soft shadows. I don't really need this, it doesn't bother me that much in terms of the gameplay. But of course, if your graphics card can take it, then you know, bump everything up to as maximum as you possibly can, so that you get the best gameplay as you possibly can. Of course, in terms of realism uh, and immersion inside of VR. So let's just bring this out. Now you'll see that when I move my head around, there is no issues whatsoever. I can walk around also. No issues whatsoever either. Now, my motion vector is still on because I need it on for the AMD card. But for the NVIDIA um, RTX 2070, I don't need motion vector. In fact, it's the opposite. If I turn it on, I will have some issues. In terms of the guns, the guns are good. I don't have... The anti-aliasing is doing its job. I just see a little bit of tiny, tiny jagged edges there on the floor. But other than that, everything is pretty much doing its job. The particles here are running pretty smoothly. As you can see, the graphics are very good. The light, the torch is very well done. There's no issue. There's no, you know, warping of textures or anything like that. When I go from one to the other here, everything is all good. Everything is working really well. There's good depth of field over there. It really gives me the impression that I'm inside of a 3D environment. It's really no issues whatsoever. A little bit of jittery when I move my head when I, when I look towards here for some strange reason. This I'm not quite sure how to fix, to be honest, I've tested so many different options and downloaded so many different drivers and so many different softwares of AMD, changed all the settings like crazy, gone online, watched so many different YouTube videos. It's been absolutely mad to get used to the AMD set setup, to be honest with you, compared to the RTX 2070. Alright, there's a horde of zombies there. Let's start. Reloading! 
Alright, so when we kill the zombies, there's no issues here. They're all moving pretty well. Everything good so far, as you can tell. It's a pretty big horde of zombies. Alright, so all good so far in terms of killing all the zombies and everything. No problems with the graphics here, everything is good, still no latency. Nothing's happening that is disturbing me in uh, any shape or form at this moment in time. Everything's still good. When I move around, everything is smooth, not having any issues. But as I mentioned, the resolution is at 90. And there are more there are more jagged edges on the reflections, the wet areas. It's not the anti-aliasing is not as smooth as an RTX 2070, I have to admit. Uh, the atmosphere in here is absolutely amazing. We do have some jagged edges here. Okay, we're gonna have some more zombies coming. There we go, they're all here. Now I just wanna let them come towards us so you can actually see that there is no issues with the graphics. Oh, they're absolutely everywhere. Alright, so no issues with the graphics so far. Everything's good. Maybe I can bump it up to one. Let's, uh, let's check it out. Let's go to video. And then let me just bump it up to one. And see whether we can actually... There's a little bit more latency in the controls when I put it to one though, I can tell. It's not one to one. It's a little bit slower. Tiny fraction of a second slower. But let's see how he handles things. Yeah, it's definitely less move when I'm walking around. I can definitely, it's, it gets a bit more blurry and also when I move my head, it gets more jittery. So I'm going to bring it down to 90 once again. There we go, it's much better for me. And the controllers are more one-to-one -one now. I mean, the textures are absolutely sublime. You can see all the details here. Absolutely amazing. I am having a little bit of jitter when I move my head up and right up and down so I could bring either this either this down and then the jitter is all gone or bring the anti-aliasing down and the jitter is all down all gone also in fact I prefer to bring the anti-aliasing down because if I bring the the actual render scale it will make things look more blurry to be honest with you definitely have some jitter here so I cannot put on one it's not possible with this computer with this laptop with the G8 Fury ZenBook by HP it is not possible to put it on render scale 1 in this game now even without my OBS running to be very honest with you I cannot put it on 1 either I'm using the actual settings graphic settings based on not having you know my OBS on uh, even though having my OBS on doesn't seem to really affect things in terms of computational computational power it seems to render the same effect whether I have OBS on or OBS off regardless it doesn't seem to make a difference whatsoever so during the gameplay itself at these settings to be honest with you if you've never tried VR before you won't really notice it because it is still very very clear but as someone who uses other cards and has done hundreds of thousands of hours inside well not hundreds of thousands but thousands of hours in VR over the years is definitely noticeable for me in terms of the discrepancy in graphics the using using this laptop for sure but it's still very good you can see all the detail of everything here is absolutely amazing and if we were to change the actual texture quality to high it's okay the headset can actually handle it or well, it can handle it here at the moment 
without any issues whatsoever. So if I was just to show you the differences between high and half. So this is half resolution. Sorry, that was full resolution. This is 8th resolution. It's still not bad, it's still pretty good at 8th resolution to be honest. Then we have quarter resolution. And then now we have half resolution. You can see more details out there. And then we have full resolution. With all the complete details everywhere. It's very hard to see the differences. The differences are very slight. That's amazing every time that he explodes. But again, there's there's no issues with the graphics right now. Can't see anything whatsoever. We're completely in the pitch dark. Okay, so now I'm having a little bit of jitter inside of my VR headset when I move around. Which means we should bring down the textures again. So you see I have to constantly change the resolution here and there so that I can actually run the game properly because the graphics are so intensive that Oh, you took me from by surprise. Wait up. Reloading. God, they took me by surprise, these guys. Oh! Alright. Oh, man. That was close. We could look at the guns here also. See the textures on the guns are pretty good. They look pretty realistic. For those who've played Half-Life Alex will know that this the feel of the game inside does reminisce a little bit of Half-Life Alex. A little tribute to Half-Life Alex, I, I would imagine. Going down further the Going down further the rabbit hole. Oh man, this is amazing. When the graphics happen like this, this is crazy gameplay, but it really works well. It's super dark, the colors are super contrasty, and of course there's no issues whatsoever with the tracking, just FYI. Using this laptop, there's no latency with the controllers and no latency with the tracking of the headset nor the tracking of the controllers. Everything's dark again. It's absolutely phenomenal when this happens because you can't see anything whatsoever. So many zombies, the graphics are absolutely fine. But as you can tell, everything is good. Everything worked pretty well. There was no stutter, there was no you know no issues with the graphics whatsoever. Everything just worked perfectly fine. And I believe that uh, that concludes the stage. So again, when we come back to the hub, just want to show this to you before we actually move on. That now when I move my headset left and right, there are some issues. So I have to go back into the menu turn down and then bring this back to 70 just for the menu it's absolutely fine it's no issue and then basically now it's much better even though I'm still getting some stutter so I do need to bring the resolution even further down there we go to an eighth 
Still getting stutter. Not quite sure how to fix this, to be honest with you. There we go. Now it's all gone. No more stutter. So guys, as you noticed during the gameplay, I really didn't really have that much of an issue. But I have to tell you guys that at the end of the day, compared to the RTX 2070, i7-9700K, Hero Maximus 11 motherboard, and some NVMe and stuff from my desktop, there's definitely a big difference inside of the RTX. And also when I was using the G7 Quadro 5000, there was also a difference. NVIDIA are just able to provide, even though I was using the same graphic settings, more or less as the AMD Radeon Pro, the anti-aliasing inside of the RTX is just, ha oh man, much more butter smooth. It just feels much more professional. Yes, I still have some of the exact same stutter areas and issues as the AMD, but graphically speaking, it just feels much more, what can I tell you, at home, much more steady, much more rock solid. I just prefer the RTX 2070 power or card or colors or what have you not. It just feels much smoother. So I would still tend to weigh more towards an RTX NVIDIA card than I would towards an AMD card. However, this doesn't go to say that other AMD cards on desktop computers aren't better than the RTX NVIDIA cards. Of course, I cannot prove that. I cannot state that. I'm just talking about in terms of the laptop of the G8 Fury, comparing it to the G7 Fury ZenBook, then I would say that the G8 is definitely lacking there in terms of power, anti-aliasing, and overall gaming quality VR applications when using it. Now, the other thing is that this laptop, the G8 Fury, is not meant for gaming, guys. It is actually meant for enterprise, which means that the software that comes with it doesn't provide you all the tools that you would be provi provided sorry, with a graphics card, an AMD Radeon card from the desktop, enabling you to change all the various different gaming settings from the chill things, the relaxed things, all, all this kind of stuff that I cannot change. I have to really put everything to minimum or disable everything inside of the G8 because otherwise it will render more issues as I actually have gameplay inside of VR using the laptop itself. And as I mentioned, I did go online. I did optimize the laptop and did everything that I need to do. Do go to the link description below for more details about this video where I explain exactly the set things one by one and so what I did to get the optimal performance that I possibly could using the AMD Radeon Pro with the G8 Fury ZenBook laptop. Now finally what I can talk to you about is in terms of using the Omnicep HP Reverb G2 or the G2 version 2. Now for the lighting and the tracking I had no issues whatsoever. I never lost the tracking not even once, I just want to make this very clear. And also with the actual cable, using the new cable, which is supposed to help AMD users or players, it doesn't make a difference whatsoever. This cable here, which is the native cable from the HP Reverb G2 version one, not version two, which is the initial cable that I received about a year and a half ago or so, works absolutely the same as it would with this new cable here, which is, less than six months old and I've barely used this cable actually because I kind of prefer the other cable. It's just simpler and what can I tell you? I just prefer the other use in the first cable. I don't get any stutter. I don't get any issues when I'm walking around or anything like that. Everything just works absolutely fine as it is. So there's no differences there in terms of the cable. All right, guys, I hope that this video helped you in trying to make a decision. But if I were you, if I was looking for a laptop for gaming purposes inside of virtual reality, I would not get the G8 Fury ZenBook by HP. I would get the G7 Fury because it is much better, much more powerful and much more convenient for gaming than this laptop. However, if you are looking to do, for example, some modeling or animation or editing or perhaps anything to do using specific software for enterprise in the animation world or gaming world, then for sure get this laptop as it is power packed with features and do go online to check out all these 
different features that will help you to optimize your productivity and graphic enhancements for those specific enterprise applications. But for gaming consumer or gaming enterprises and you want to go into roadshows and do more VR than development, then I definitely advise you get the G8 and not, sorry, the G7 and not the G8. All right, guys, I'll see you in another video on this one or maybe that one. And of course, in a new video coming very soon. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe so you don't miss that video. All right, guys, until next time, see you later. Bye for now.